Hello, everyone. It is uh, my great pleasure and honor to be here and share my experience with you with PSMA PET CT Imaging. Thank you so much for inviting me. Today, I was asked to give the following presentation, how to integrate PSMA PET findings into the treatment algorithms. I hope you have some fun with the ski. I start uh, with my disclosures in the past two to three years, just to be systematic. I will pause a couple of seconds. And now I can start. Uh, so it's great. Now we have multiple PSMA agents FD approved uh, since December 2020. 2021 was Pilarify and then recently the Telix kit. Uh, so I think that's great. It will give a great access to patients. Uh, furthermore, there was um, now Medicare coverage and uh, with the HCPS codes that were out, both for Gallium 68, PSMA 11, and the PYL. So I think now it should be pretty clear that every patient will get a PSMA PET scan uh, staging for their prostate cancer disease management. And furthermore, the NCCN has included PSMA PET as a frontline imaging tool uh, in the NCCN guidelines. And uh, for these three indication, initial staging, biochemical recurrence, or even progressing MHCPC or non-metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. So that's great. Patient will get, many patients will get PSMA PET scan the more and more uh, with the, the commercial availability of it. Now, this will, of course, lead to stage migrations, as, you, as you're well aware. And uh, the question is, how do we use this new stage migration findings uh, uh, for the best of, the, of our patients? So all these uh, disease categories in prostate cancer, uh, from the clinically localized primary disease to the advanced MCRPC stage, were defined based on conventional imaging. And each has uh, some uh, specific treatment indications based on uh, clinical trials. I summarize here uh, the name of the clinical trial registrations. But now it's pretty clear and well established that uh, PSMA PETS is uh, more sensitive, more specific, and more accurate than any other imaging modality. And uh, with that, you will have, of course, a lot of uh, stage migration. It has been shown that even at early CRPC, you have having, let's say, 45% upstaging to M1 disease. In high-risk NMCRPC, you have upstaging to M1 disease in more than 55% of the patients. So I think it creates new categories. It's not just M0 or M1. It is now M0 conventional imaging, M0 PSMA PET. M1 conventional imaging, M1 PSMA PET, and there is this new intermediate category of M0 conventional imaging and M1 PSMA PET. It also redefined the oligometastatic versus polymetastatic patients, which uh, can have uh, some consequence in terms of oligometastatic directed therapy uh, with a count of three to five lesions. So I took here the image of this iceberg before we were seeing that. Um, we were seeing this uh, small part of the iceberg with colin fusikovin a little bit more and with PSMA PET a little bit more again. It's not perfect. Uh, in some patients, what we see is maybe almost all of the burden of the disease. In some other patients, in fact, there is some hidden micrometastasis. And in some other patients, there is even much more micrometastasis. It's just that with PSMA PET, you underestimate less the burden of the disease. And upstaging usually uh, translate into improved outcome of the selected patients who underwent undergo specific treatment. In the uh, trial that compare fusiclovin PET versus uh, conventional imaging PET uh, before salvage radiation therapy, well, the patients selected to get uh, radiation therapy by fusiclovin PET had a better outcome. In patients who are treated with oligometastatic directed uh, therapy, either selected by PSMA PET or Colin PET. With PSMA PET, you are able, you can see the, the, the PSA level here of 0.5 versus 2. You are able to detect an oligometastatic target uh, for uh, therapy earlier than Colin PET. And so you get a better outcome with a more sensitive imaging agent. For surgery, it has been shown in this little study, for example, that compare patients who underwent surgery after selection by conventional imaging or selection by PSMA PET group 
you can see that uh, the uh, biochemical persistence uh, after surgery is much uh, higher in the conventional imaging group. So PSMA PET can improve the outcome of patients in selected population. Now, once you have done a PSMA PET scan, how do you use this new imaging findings for the best treatment strategy? I think the, the model to follow is really lymphoma. Uh, for decades now, FDG PET is part of the basic baseline staging, and each FDG PET disease stage or findings has a dedicated uh, treatment algorithm as shown here. Ideally, I would like to see the same with PSMA PET, and maybe one day we'll get there. The first step to go there is to define and find out what is the outcome, the clinical outcome after each PSMA PET pattern for each uh, separate treatment. So let's look at the primary staging first. Uh, the main question, of course, is what do you do with N1 disease? Should you still operate? Should you do radiation therapy when uh, a patient with high risk has N1 disease detected by PSMA PET? Well, now after five years, six years of use, we start to have mature data uh, of outcome after surgery in patients who were staged initially with PSMA PET. In this uh, study on the left side and in the study on the right side, it is the same findings. If you have N1 disease on the PSMA PET scan before the surgery, well, you will not do very well after radical prostatectomy and pelvic lymph node dissection, at least in terms of PSA progression. Whereas patient with N0, M0 disease, just localized to the prostate visible by PSMA PET, they do much better. Yeah, similar findings were reported here where they combine uh, other additional parameters than just the N1 and M1 staging. They add like the intensity of the SUV in the primary tumor. Uh, they combine this and you can see it correlates nicely with the, the outcome. And so maybe one day we will uh, keep surgery only for these patients and not these ones because it seems to not work very well. Maybe something like this can happen. I just want to make sure that a negative N0 PSMA PET scan does not exclude N1 microscopic disease. A negative N0 PSMA PET scan is prognostic of better outcome after local therapy. And uh, a negative N0 PET scan must not preclude local therapy because there is always a potential microscopic disease in there. In another study, we look at uh, 200 patients with uh, untreated primary staging, high-risk disease, all N0, N0 by conventional imaging, and we look at the predictive factors uh, for N1, M1 upstaging on a PSMA PET scan. These were the initial PSA, the percentage of positive cores, the bleeds and gray group, and the C stage. We created a nomogram and an online tool that gives you a score for prediction of upstaging on a PSMA PET scan. And this score, you can see here the different risk group, one, two, three, four, depending on the percentage of upstage risk. Well, they correlate pretty nicely with the outcome. Here's the BCR, the distant metastasis free survival, prostate cancer specific mortality survival, and overall survival. So maybe one day we'll use these curves and such a score or similar scores to say that this group, for example, should not receive that treatment of that treatment. In that case, it was a, a mix of surgery and radiation therapy. Let's look at biochemical recurrence now. Um, it has been nicely shown, again, after five, six years of PSMA PET use, we can uh, see some mature outcome data that the metastatic free survival is uh, much worse in patients who had the PSMA PET scan positive for N1 or M1 disease uh, at the time of uh, salvage radiation therapy after prostatectomy. Here is the five years uh, numbers. You can see a pretty big difference. Here in that study, they show that these patients that had either PSMA PET scan completely negative or PSMA PET scan showing disease only in the prostate bed versus PSMA PET scan showing disease in the node or in metastasis, well, you can see the difference in outcome. And here, very interestingly, patient treated uh, with radiation therapy, you take only this group, the patient who are negative uh, uh, by, uh, for N1 metastasis and M1 metastasis, they have disease uh, only um, confined to the prostate uh, bed or negative scan. You see that if you treat them 
you they do much better than patients who were observed, which was uh, uh, something that uh, some doctors wanted to do. If they have a negative scan, I don't treat them. You can see that, in fact, you have to treat them. And uh, I like this trial that was out uh, recently because it's in JCO. It's a big uh, randomized prospective phase three trial. And it used PSMA PET scan in the inclusion criteria to select the patient who were non-metastatic and non-negative uh, as an inclusion criteria. And 80% uh, of the patients were selected like that in this. This is exactly what we need to include more and more PSMA PET scan into the treatment algorithms. What about uh, oligometastatic? Of course, uh, early detection of disease enabled these uh, treatments. Um, first, Kaplan-Meier curves generated in big cohorts show that the more you have disease, the worse you do as uh, usual. And you can see here that the patients that do better are the ones that have only one metastasis in terms of overall survival. Uh, so maybe in the future, I mean, the oligometastatic space is a, a lot of controversy, but the PSMA PET scan findings can be used to refine the indication on that. Here in that study, they show that uh, when you have oligopelvic disease, oligo di oligometastatic disease confined to the pelvic disease only versus extra pelvic, uh, there is a pretty good difference between the two. So, of course, in that study, that's uh, also interesting. Uh, they show that patients who have oligometastatic directed therapy and salvage radiation therapy to the prostate bed do better than the patient uh, with, with oligometastatic directed therapy only. And all these patients were selected by PSMA PET. And you can see that this difference is even further observed in patients who have no local recurrence uh, by PSMA PET. What about in CRPC now? Um, so there is a lot of debate whether we can still do a PSMA PET scan in a patient population where in any case we'll give uh, some kind of uh, systemic therapy, second line of androgen depuration therapy, uh, what is the point to do imaging? Uh, we start to have a little bit of data here. It's, uh, there is less data in PubMed and in these two studies, for example, they did uh, um, PSMA PET scan in a CRPC population and it enabled the detection of oligometastatic MCRPC patients who receive oligometastatic directed therapy, which delay the initiation of a second line systemic therapy in MCRPC uh, from 15 months here and 16 months in that study. So that may be something that can be interesting um, if that would be a name for that population. Now, one of the key, uh, let's say, integration of PSMA PET in the treatment algorithm is a patient who will be treated with lutetium PSMA therapy. I think here is pretty, straightforward because it will be probably attached to the label somehow of lutetium PSMA therapy. Uh, but as you know, in the vision trial, there were PSMA PET scan used for including patients. Uh, they were centrally read. Here are the criteria. Patient needed to have sufficient PSMA expression defined as uptake above the liver in one of the metastatic lesions and the absence of PSMA negative lesion defined as a pretty big lesion, you can see like one centimeter or 2.5 centimeter for the lymph node by CT, measurable, resist criteria, with an uptake below the liver. If you apply this criteria in the vision trial, the screen failure rate was 12%. One question was, what happens to this patient if you treat them? Do we really need to exclude them or not? So we did a little study um, we pulled retrospectively data from multiple sites that treated with lutetium PSMA between 2015 and 2022. Uh, we reapplied this criteria based on vision into this data set, and we were able to screen fail more uh, 29 patients who had either PSMA negative lesion or no PSMA positive lesion, such as here. Here's an example of a liver metastasis, PSMA negative lesion. Here's an example of a lung metastasis, a PSMA negative lesion. And here is a, an example of a lymph node metastasis, PSMA negative lesion. And you can see that the patient with uh, these screen failure criteria by vision, they have worse PSA response and they have worse outcome. Here's the PSA progression for survival and the overall survival.
So I think this uh, can show pretty good that uh, you need to do a PSMA PET scan integrated into the treatment algorithm for patients who are considered for lutetium PSMA therapy. Here is another study showing nicely what you can find on the PSMA PET scan uh, at baseline and the value of it to predict kind of the response to lutetium PSMA therapy. For example, in that example, patients with low and homogeneous uptake on the PSMA PET scan, they do not well under lutetium PSMA therapy. So I think they should not be considered unless there is really nothing else to do uh, for lutetium PSMA therapy. That is how I see we can integrate PSMA PET into the treatment algorithm. We created a, another nomogram combining multiple uh, parameters uh, on the, the baseline characteristic of patient considered for lutetium PSMA therapy. Here again, PSMA PET scan uh, was significantly integrated into the nomogram. It uh, now also is it's available online at, uh, uh, at this address. You will have it on the slide and enables to uh, define or predict kind of uh, pretty nicely the, the response to lutetium PSMA therapy. And this incorporates PSMA PET as well. Uh, the last time I, I would just put on the table, the last thing I will going to put on the table is uh, the treatment response assessment. There are some proposals of scores uh, that are out there. They show pretty good kaplan myer curves now. I think it still needs to be validated into the big uh, prospective trials to be really used. But I think ultimately that may or may not, but I hope it will uh, replace the standard conventional imaging-based response uh, assessment uh, for earlier assessment. And I think that uh, that would be the next step to have PSMA PET integrated into the guideline. So this will be my last slide. I think PSMA PET creates new categories. Uh, each of these new categories have specific predictive value after specific treatments. PSMA PET can also uh, be used for response assessment if we just have to define a correct uh, criteria to assess that. And the key point to integrate PSMA PET into the treatment algorithms is that now each of the big randomized phase three trials must include PSMA PET staging or screening or selection information into their inclusion criteria. And uh, therefore, then it will be attached to the level of a treatment indication or something like this. Uh, that's how I see it. I hope this uh, will. Uh, be of interest for you and that it will generate a great discussion.